The storm is on the horizon for the clash. Headlining March day four is minutes away from kickoff. A match that needs no introduction. Arguably one of the fixtures marked as a red letter day when the season schedules are released. This is the big one. Viper Sports Club takes on SC Villa. One could talk about the titles, 22 to be precise between the two. With the proud record of the double Salongo, only with these two. Impeccable home records, commendable football philosophies, outstanding player development, enviable sponsorship deals, stars started playing rosters, and a ferociously loyal fan base on both ends. But when it comes to the bare bones at the heart of the matter, this is more than three points. This is more than a title fixture. This is for the bragging rights. This is for dominance. A tempestuous strife between SC Villa and Vipers. The clock and making sure 7 p.m. We are underway. Sports Club Villa, the visitors, pay a visit to a fortress that hasn't been breached in aeons as Vipers in red and black host them here at St. Mary Stadium in Chitende. Yeah, of course, the start uh, not a very good one for SC Villa. They, they lose the ball from their own start and um, that's a bit uh, disappointing. I don't know whether it has uh, something to do with what well, you call the Christian uh, number one now. He's uh, the person that is being used there. Well, more. Sports Club Villa managed to snatch the ball and a first time shot in here. Viper Sports Club dicing with the devil here. And clumsiness at that back line nearly costing them a quick sharp reminder of what they need to anticipate in their very good play coming in from the likes of Umzima as the ball was dispossessed and quickly picked up in here by Uma Lutalo, ever present and at the heart of almost everything that sparkles in Sports Club Villa. Yeah, that was good pressing from SC Villa and you think that but maybe the angle was a bit uh, narrow for him to try and beat uh, Jaco Market from there. Cross for Vipers, looking for Ekbad and it echoes of space, the hitman puts that over the bar. Well, we're not standing on occasion for this one, it looks like both teams want to go straight for the jugular. Acres of space, would you imagine, would you in your wildest dreams believe that Yunus, the hitman center move, would miss that one? Well, I can tell you that never in my wildest dreams. I actually, when, when the ball just landed at his feet, I thought that that was 1-0 uh, to Vipers. And I'm sure that uh, he must be eating himself up inside there. He just can't believe that he missed that. You can see that expression on his face. It's big games. Trying to break away and that's a foul. And that's definitely going to be a sitting from set pieces. And here comes one ball floated in, a miscued, and Sports Club Villa once again go for the Achilles heel of the Venoms. It's their biggest weakness, it's been their biggest soft spot. And Sports Club Villa utilizing it to the utmost advantage, striking in the first 10 minutes, first blood drawn, gunlet. To the virtual goals. Yeah, that was a very, very good goal scored there by uh, Gavin Chizito. Again, you could see that that shot that was delivered in uh, by uh, the left boot of uh, Uma Rutalo just couldn't be contended with by the goalkeeper Jaco Market and uh, Gavin Chizito. A reject here at uh, St. Mary's Stadium in Chitende comes back and uh, punishes them. I'm sure it feels so good to return to what should have been your stomping ground and then you turn out uh, to be the person that scores the opener. That was a very good gift to him clearly that's I don't think he has scored a bigger goal in his life than this one well absolutely impeccable good reflexes and the cornerstone the stone that was rejected now becomes a cornerstone for their opponents Gavin Chisito Mugweri hipping pain on the defending that's right flank Milton Carissa will put in the pace and beats his marker brought down in the box area what does the referee have to say well telling moment here and it doesn't look like Vipers will benefit from that incident. But to the naked eye, first instance, that probably looked like a penalty. Gavin tagging, Gavin pulling. That's a penalty, Jermaine. That is a penalty. Any day, that should be a penalty. No question about it. And I'm sure Up that... Front, six players to aim at. And he picks out the captain, Milton Carissa, trying to get Abube Kalawal onto the ball. Does well to retain possession. Snapshot. But that will be easily smothered here by goalkeeper Norman Angofindru. Formally, he point out its dominance, but also might spell just how safe their jobs are. Yeah, of course, uh, you win this game and uh, it 
definitely assures your employers that you're ready to keep to be in charge. Well, another blunder from the goalkeeper here. We did see a slight miscue from Jack Komake that resulted in a goal. Numan Angufindru came out well for that ball, judged the trajectory well, but dropped it where it was least expected and quite nearly gave a scare to the Villa fans. Yeah, almost, almost uh, dropped a clanger there. And uh, he's a very lucky boy, I'll tell you. You do this, the good thing is that his reaction was quick in trying to get it the second time. And um, so whatever you know, Sentamu tried to do there to get the ball was uh, a judge to be illegal. Well, fair chance here, fair opportunity. And Vipers continue knocking at the door, but here comes. He should be keen on watching out for his movement as he goes straight for the shot. Norman has just enough to palm that away. Corner kick for Sports Club Villa to defend against as Vipers will once again try to weave another one in. Corner kick for Vipers. Full of bodies in that box area. Sports Club Villa now have to knit up that defense. Ball whipped in. Driving header there from Abube Kalawal. In the end, not on target. And it will count for nothing more than a goal kick. Yeah, not a bad delivery by Yanukani, but you think that uh, maybe Abube Kalawal needed to glance that ball better than he did. Thought that it was uh, quite a good opportunity. Of course, as we watch a replay from the free kick earlier on, good goal kicking there by Angu Findu pretty well even though he's um, somehow a better showing long cross in goalkeeper Angofindru manages to palm away a chance here for Anukani but the ball is headed over as to defending Arnold Odong quick to react with good reflexes and averts the danger putting the ball over the bar for a corner Vipers again with a corner kick another opportunity for them to carve out a chance to get back in the game. Poor corner from Brighton Okani. Easily hacked away at by the defense. And the ball goes all the way now back. Now look to capitalize on a counter-attack. Here comes Onzima. Onzima taking on Ekeburn. Onzima whips in the cross. A chance here. Could be an opportunity. Ah, poor opportunity. Well, good opportunity, but poor execution there. Ivan Bukere. Well, for a moment there seemed to be and think he was alone on the pitch. But I think it's, it all comes down to the first touch. You've got to be um, confident in your first touch and I just don't think that Ivan Bogere really took that ball down well. Otherwise, if he had done that, uh, you think that that would have been uh, goal number two for AC Villa. He's coming up here, trying to call in the ball first time shot, but the ball is uh, intercepted 41 minutes AC and Villa. That will be as a signal, like blood in the water for Sharks. Yeah, that's so true what you just said. The analogy you just used is uh, the white and perfect one. Trying to have his way in and his persistent pays off as he unleashes a cannon shot. Ball still in play. The hitman, Sentamu, battles for a chance and now earns a corner for his effort. That work rate, that commitment, that resurgent spirit is what they need to keep going. An applause here from the Sports Club Villa fans who are watching this particular match up here, knowing that uh, in that instance, Angu Findru standing tall and strong for the team and keeping them in the lead. Yeah, I think that, that was a good save, but you just look at the technique used here, the persistence, the energy shown by um, you know Sentamu, just shows you the kind of quality that the man possesses. Turn defense into attack, sending it forward here for Simon Peter Onzima. Can he beat his marker, Simon Peter? A bit of momentum carrying him forward, but still has possession. Plays the tete a -tete, one two, looking for one day. Tries to unleash the shot, took a bit of a block there. Jack Komakech getting slightly tripped here by Onzima. But Hattie smiles here from the Jogo. Take it, that shot last put on by the Emperor Caesar Manzoki. The shot coming up here from Milton Carissa, high, wide, and only worthy of the rugby cranes. Well, the thing is that uh, the reason probably why Enzo Kambale decided, Kenzo rather Kambale decided to uh, turn down the offer of putting on shot number nine, he probably wants to build his own profile here uh, with a new shot number and give it uh, the reputation and uh, the kind of uh, profile that um, he wants uh, to be. Sentamu, Yunus, the hitman, looking for Kambale, getting it on. Abdul Karim Watambala, high and wide. Well, one thing is absolutely certain, the next training session is going to have target practice well marked out for the forwards here. Yeah, I think that that was uh, a very good opportunity for Vipers. 
But I think the, the only reason why that ball went high and wide was because it landed on his uh, weaker foot, the right one. If he had landed on his left foot, you think that uh, he would have tested the goalkeeper a lot better than he did right there. That was good play and a good steal, good pressure coming in from uh, Milton Kalisa getting the ball away. Yeah, you think so. And um, those are the kind of options that you feel that Villa have to call on. Shot from distance, palmed down and ultimately held up well here by Norman Angufindru. It was a speculative shot, but yeah. uh, quite nearly provided the opening. And Mohamed Salam Ekbad by no means willing to give this one up without a fight. Huffing and puffing and looking for that bright opening. I think that's uh, been his uh, best moment in the game. He's uh, clearly been missing in action, but you wonder whether this kind of op op opportunity that he just had, taking a shot, could encourage him to actually do a lot more of this. Seems to have the technique, but um, somehow he really... And the ball is passed on now to Kakande. Can he fashion out an opportunity? Jonah Patrick Kakande, not a shooter, but a chance comes up here. Snapshot out of the top draw there. And Uma Lutalo nearly stunning sports club vipers as they were really caught a bit wayward here and in two minds of sorts yeah also very good setup there coming in from uh, kakande i think that the run that he made there and then uh, trying to commit the vipers defenders and then he plays it square to find uh, the left foot of uh, that man Lutalo. i think he has done that often times uh, no, trying to commit the vipers defenders and then he plays it square to find uh, the left foot of uh, that man Lutalo, I think he has done that often times. Well, Vipers themselves getting a chance here to attack. In the end, comes out to nothing as Abdul Lumala beginning to show glimpses of brilliance here. Made a dazzling run here. Attempted the shot, but that was from distance, wayward. Probably just finding his uh, range scope for the start. He has little the time. electric one, Abdul Lumala. Picking up the captain, Milton Carissa, back to Lumala in the box area, and a chance here. Goalkeeper comes up, and a miscue! Point blank range! That should have been the strike! That was the opportunity! Oh my word, Eric Kenzo Kambale could have bathed himself in glory, could have immortalized himself on his debut. Unfortunately, the stars just not aligning right for him. He will wait for his first goal. And Vipers continue the wait for an equalizer. Well, what an opportunity that was uh, for Eric Kambale to actually get himself into the good books of uh, this uh, Vipers faithful to start uh, eulogizing him for the kind of uh, player that they bought, a big game player he's expected to be. He's, one of his last goals in the start of Uganda Premier League came against Villa. Encouraging Pilar. an entrepreneurial play coming in here from the Venoms consistently now beginning to cover part sports club Villa. Villa need to hold it tight, need to be a little more tenacious and avoid clumsy mistakes, giving away set pieces in such opportunities. Obviously, Monde protesting his innocence yeah, because his hands are on his body. And uh, I think uh, for Vipers, can they work something out here? 13 minutes on the clock, long ball, floated in. Goalkeeper fumbles, opportunity to strike! And similar shades to the opening goal! The Vipers strike back, coiled, recoiled, and epitomizing the resilience it takes to get right back in the game. There might be complaints of fouls on the goalkeeper. There might be protests of ill play in that box area. But in the end, the nut rifles, and it's right back to square one. Vipers one, AC Villa one. Well, it's one of those goals that uh, is very difficult actually to talk about because there was so much of the goal mouth mainly there and the ball kept bubbling and bouncing all over the place and it's not even clear who just got the last touch on it as you can see as he was desperately just getting his foot off the ground because he was on the ground there as you see there the goalkeeper comes out, misses the ball and uh, Mboa with his uh, body on the ground he just uh, kicks the ball and it ends up in the back of the net he probably didn't know what he was even trying to do there but I don't think that uh, there's much I can say about that goal. And looking at the balance of play, in many ways, and out on the wing. Sentamo looking to cross in here. Chance coming up. Lumala shot. Goalkeeper fumbles. Manages to pick it up again. Milton Carissa, the captain, leading by example. But the questions will now be: What is befalling that Sports Club Villa defence? Quite reminiscent of what befell the Tower of Babel 
absolute discommunication in there. Disjointed. We're quite in another world altogether. Well, I'll tell you something, Jermaine, that uh, normally for a team like SC Villa with so much inexperience and with players uh, that are just coming into the side, when they are scored against in the manner that... Yunus Sentamo sets it up. Abdul Karim Watambala to the box area. Cannon shot. Goalkeeper. First attempt, not quite precise, but the second one, he does well enough and is not at all a happy man with the defence lining up in front of him for allowing Watambala even a sniff at the goal. Well, I can tell you that that was a good hit by Watambala. And um, oh. if I was so far away... Played on, cleared out here. Sports Club Villa now looking to keep it at bay. Turning one way, then the other. Boa, and that is the final bit of action in this game. 1,400 and over 20 days. The walls of the St. Mary's Stadium hold true as a fortress. Faltering in the first half and crumbling as Gavin Chisitomugweri did stab home an early incident there to give the sports club Villa fans hope and belief that they just might be able to edge out this particular battle this time round. But in a scramble and a melee from a set piece, it only fell to a certain Patrick Mboa that was able to go ahead and put this ball into the back of the net and make sure that he is unable to fully celebrate with humility having played for Sports Club Villa but still doing enough to wreak damage to the ambition of holding all three points home. In the end, against the run of play, it probably is entirely befitting that this will go down the annals of history as the eighth draw between the two teams, Sports Club Villa and Vipers Sports Club. Full time under the bright lights of the St. Mary Stadium in Chitende. It is Vipers Sports Club 1, Sports Club Villa 1.